Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the assembly language series. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, code segments and the segment registers in the CPU. So why do we need segment registers in the CPU? The idea is that uh, DOS is a 16-bit operating system, and it used to run on 16-bit computers. And that means if you only have 16 bits, you can only reference 64 kilobytes of RAM. So, uh, but we know that DOS allows us to use up to 640 kilobytes of RAM uh, for user processes. Uh, so how do we do that? How do we even reference uh, addresses larger than 64 kilobytes? And the answer to that is with segment registers. And the idea is, is relatively simple, that we combine two 16-bit registers together, and that gives us more bits for an address. Now, these registers aren't concatenated together. Uh, that would probably be the easiest thing. Uh, but uh, rather, um, the segment register is kind of shifted, and then the, um, the uh, source or destination rest register gets added onto it as an offset. So essentially, the segment register points to a place in, in memory, and then uh, the other register does an offset of that. And so the way that those two are combined actually gives us 20 bits for an address, which means we can address up to one megabyte of RAM, uh, which is good enough for the old days of DOS. Uh, so uh, those are uh, so that's the idea behind segment registers. I've pulled up this page uh, to show uh, the six uh, different segment registers, so you can see what they are. Uh, the most common ones are the stack, code, data, and extra segment. Uh, F and G uh, segment registers exist, but uh, you don't really see them as much. Now, these segment registers will get, comp get combined with another register, uh, and typically there'll be a destination source or data register. Uh, and so that's kind of the idea. Now, uh, now that we know that what these segment registers are, how do we know when to use them or which register to use? And the, and, uh, the answer to this comes from essentially two different sources. So one is DOS itself. So if we look at the documentation for the DOS instructions, and in this case, I'm looking at Ralph Brown's interrupt list, and we're looking at a particular DOS instruction, which is to write to a file or device. Uh, we can see what the requirements are to call this instruction. And one of the requirements is this ds colon dx um, registers, uh, which uh, are combined together to create an address. So this is one way that you can figure out which uh, segment register to use, is look at the DOS documentation to see, uh, if any, uh, what register, what segment register to use for calling a DOS uh, uh, operating system function. There is a second source, and that is the instruction set itself. There are certain instructions that actually use specific uh, segment registers. And in this case, uh, I'm going to show, or I've pulled up uh, uh, this particular one, this SCAS instruction, which stands for scan string, and it uses the extra segment. So you can see that there's this ES, and then there's a colon, and then there's this DI uh, register. And so it says that for this instruction, you need to fill out the extra segment and the DI segment, and those two will go uh, will be combined together to form the address that SCAS looks at. Uh, now, uh, the reason why I pulled these uh, two things up, the SCAS instruction and the write instruction for DOS, is we're going to actually create a program that uses both of these. So remember that the writing to a file, uh, we need to use the data segment, and then for scanning a string, uh, we need to use the extra segment. Uh, so in this case, we're going to uh, change the view and uh, take a look at a little program that I wrote ahead of time uh, called Sterling. And so this, uh, the idea behind this, fun uh, behind this program is that it uh, gets the length of a string and then prints out a string. So let's take a look at it. And you'll see here, so it's this program will be slightly different than other uh, Hello World programs that we've uh, used before. Uh, one of the main things uh, that you'll see is now we have an entry point, um, and uh, you'll see this main colon start. And the idea behind this is that it says, okay, uh, it tells 
the uh, the assembler. Uh, this whole instruction here is actually an instruction to the assembler, not the CPU. And it says we're going to uh, start at this main segment. And the address that we will start as an offset to that is just at the start. Uh, of course, we set the stack. And then uh, this will be the first time that we've seen this, uh, that we're creating segments in our code. So this also is an instruction to the assembler and not the CPU. Uh, so it says that we're creating a new segment. It is called main, and it starts here. So everything after this is part of the main segment. And so then if we scroll down a bit, we'll see that there's another segment, and this one is called text. And it says, and this also is an instruction to the assembler that says everything after this will be part of the text segment. Now, so those, that's how we create segments in our code. Now, how do we use them? Remember that we want to call our uh, SCASB instruction, right, which is here. And that required a uh, data segment, I believe, I believe uh, or actually it required an extra segment. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to set up that extra segment. So before we call string length, which is going to require the, uh, the segment to be set for our text, we need to set this up because it's going to require that extra segment to be set. So up above here, th these two instructions are what we use to set the extra segment. And so what this does is this first instruction says, okay, we're going to take that text segment, which is down at the bottom of the program, and we're going to load the address of that text segment into the A register. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this A register and we're going to load it into the extra segment. Now, the reason why we can't load the text segment address directly into the extra segment address is that the x86 instruction set doesn't allow us to directly put an address into the extra segment. We have to use this in between with the A register. So that's a little, uh, little kind of bookkeeping thing that we have to do. But uh, once we do that, we actually set up our extra segment. And so once the extra segment is set, then we can just say, okay, uh, remember it takes ES or ES and then DI. So we're going to set our text, um, our actual hello string, and we're going to put it into the DI register. And then we can call our string length function. Okay, and so then if we go down here, we can take a look at the string length function. Now, I won't go into the details about how this particular string length function works, but uh, needless to say, it uses this, uh, this instruction to the, um, uh, to the CPU, and this instruction in the CPU uses the extra segment and then the DI register to create an address. And then it calculates the length of the string, and then it returns, right? This, uh, this string returns, and uh, it returns back up to here uh, after we've called. And so then, remember, now we want to print out the string. So what we're going to do is printing out the string in DOS requires us to set the data segment register, right? And the data segment is going to be, okay, where is the data, where is the segment of the program that has the string that we want to print? And of course, that's in, that's also in the text segment. So we're going to set um, the AX register to have the text segment. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did above. We're going to set the uh, data segment uh, equal to the address of text. And then, of course, we just do the normal thing where we set all the rest of the registers and then call um, the print function or the write function to DOS, and that will write out the string. Uh, and then, of course, we'll just do an exit. And so that's how these things work. So uh, the previous programs that we had could only reference 64 kilobytes of RAM. And so we didn't have to worry about these segments. But if we want to write larger programs, if we want to write programs that, that use some of these other inst x86 instructions that are uh, fancier and more powerful, we need to separate our code out into segments. And then we need to be able to use the segment registers. And then, of course, remember, we can figure out which re uh, segment register we want 
want to use by looking at two different kinds of documentation. One, the documentation for DOS, and two, the documentation for the x86 instruction set. And so that uh, that is essentially all I wanted to show for today. So next time we'll take a look at uh, some more uh, powerful and interesting things uh, for DOS programming. Uh, thank you, and until next time.